The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from WizKids. Fantasy Realms from WizKids is a hand-building game that plays in about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, optimally, it plays for uh, with three to six players. You are going to have a hand of seven cards. You are going to play until there are 10 cards in the discard pile. The game is all about having different combos in your hand, cards that give points for having other cards. So let me uh, show you what the cards are kind of like. And then after that, we're going to hear from Dad's Gaming Group and what they thought as Fantasy Realms is this week's Game of the Week. So you're going to start the game with each player being dealt seven cards. So let's kind of look at a sample hand here. So you can see I have all different kinds. I have a beast card. I have weather. I have a couple of army cards. I have a flood, a flame, and a wizard. And then you'll also notice at the top of the card they have different point values. The dragon is worth 30. The blizzard's worth 30. Knights are 20. Light cavalry 17. Island 14. Fire element. Elemental 4 and the Necromancer is 3. So now you will also look at the bottom part of the card. Now the cards all have different types of uh, text down here. For instance, the dragon has a penalty that says it's worth minus 40 unless it's, a, it's with at least one wizard card. So you'll notice I don't have any, oh, I do have a wizard. So I want to make sure I keep one wizard card in my hand so that I can score my dragon and not lose 40 points. And the blizzard says it blanks all floods. And what blank means is that it blanks basically the entire card, uh, basically rendering it worthless. So you don't want to have blank cards. Um, and then it says it's minus five for each army, leader, beast, and flame. So looking at the army cards here, it says minus eight unless it's with at least one leader. Uh, Light Calvary says minus two for each land. So um, you'll notice that certain cards work good with other cards and they work bad with other cards. So you want to make sure that you're trying to build your best hand possible. So let's just say that I was the first player. I've got my hand of seven cards. The first thing I do is I don't really have a choice. I have to draw the top card off of the draw deck and figure out if I want to keep that. So I look at that and it says the penalty is it's blanked unless it's with at least one army. Well, I have some army cards there. So let's just say I'll keep those. Um, and let's just say that I'll get rid of this blizzard card. I discard it now and I am creating a tableau of discards, not a discard pile. So once we get to 10 cards in the uh, discard, then the game ends immediately. Now, I said this is a hand building game and you're basically playing everything off of combos. So let me show you a few of the really good ones. So here we have the Sword of Keth and the Shield of Keth. So you'll notice on the Sword of Keth it says it's got a bonus of plus 10 with any one leader or plus 40 with both a leader and the Shield of Keth. So if I've got one of these, I'm probably going to try to find the other one and make sure that I'm not uh, tipping my hand because people will hold on to cards instead of giving you things that you really want. Uh, the Shield of Keth gives you a plus 15 with any one leader, or it also gives a plus 40 with both a leader and the Sword of Keth. So if I have these together um, and I have a leader, I'm going to get uh, plus 40 points from each one of these cards. So that's really good to have. So next, I'm showing you the queen and the king. Uh, they both give a plus five for each army. So if you have both of them, you might want to try to build your hand up of army cards. Or you get plus 20 for each army if with the king. And the king basically gives plus 20 if for each army with the queen. So if you got these guys and then you want to start collecting army cards, so then you really have a lot of uh, bonuses that you're going to be getting from just those. Now here's a card that I really like because I've been able to pull off uh, the maximum bonus on this card, which basically you want to get a run of these numbers here at the top. So you'll notice that you get plus 10 for a three card run, but you get 150 for a seven card run. So uh, I have been able to pull that off. So what does that mean? Well, so we look at our cards down here 
you'll see I have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I'm able to have that as my ending hand in the game, then uh, the gem of order alone is going to give me 150 points. And then I'll look at everything else that I have and I'll add up the points for that as well. I think the one game that I had that I was well over 300 points, which is pretty good. Here's a combo that I've been beaten with, the candle, the book of changes, and the bell tower. You'll notice on the candle it says a bonus of plus 100 with the book of changes, bell tower, and any one wizard. So as long as you got a wizard, you can pull this off. And you know, there's another, there's a, a easy 100 points. However, this is also kind of difficult to pull off unless you already start with one of these cards because once one of these usually hits the discard pile, at least in my group, then we know somebody is going for that and our mind group is notorious for basically hate drafting so they'll make sure that that person is not able to get uh, that trio of cards the game also has several wild cards we have the shapeshifter the doppelganger and the mirage and you'll notice that each one of them starts off that you may duplicate the name and suit of any type of card so, for instance, the Mirage is Army, Land, Weather, Flood, and plane, uh, Flame. Uh, the Doppelganger uh, lets you duplicate the name, base strength, suit, and penalty, but not the bonus. And the Shapeshifter allows you to duplicate the name and suit of an artifact, leader, wizard, uh, weather, or beast. So I have showed you several cards that have penalties. One great card to have if you are going for something that basically is going to make you keep a card with a penalty is the Rune of Protection. So this basically clears the penalty on all cards. So if you're going to go for something risky, then you want to make sure that you have this card. Now one final card I want to talk about does not come with the game, but instead it is a promo card that you can get. Uh, I forgot the name of the magazine, but the card is the Jester. Um, and I've just got this because a buddy of mine actually had that magazine and got this card, but he doesn't have Fantasy Realms, so he gave it to me. Um, so we've not played any games with this yet, but you can see the bonus is plus three for each other card with an odd base strength value, or plus 50 if your entire hand has odd base strength values. So, you know, that's kind of a neat thing to, to have, and it's not really that difficult to pull off. So now that I've explained the game, Let's hear what some of my gaming group think of this. For the most part, I think everyone in my play group really enjoys Fantasy Realms. Uh, there are a couple that, yeah, they'll play it if asked, but they're not going to ask uh, to play it specifically. They found that the, the luck factor was too much really for their liking, and they had a, a harder time with the learning curve of learning all the uh, different things in the cards. Uh, however, my friend Michael did actually give me a review, and this is what Michael had to say. I really enjoy the game, and at the price point, it is a game I would have on my shelf and make it part of my regular rotation. What I like about the game is the rule explanation is simple and straightforward, which means we can get right into gameplay. Even though the rules are simple, it will take a game or two to have a good understanding of the penalties and bonuses and how you will want to build your hand. Personally, there have been times when I thought I was going to score big, only to realize I missed a penalty on one of my cards that just destroyed my score. That was my own fault and not just bad luck. Another part of the game that I enjoy is that when you get your initial hand, you usually have two or three paths that you could go down to build the best scoring hand, which is nice because you're not locked into a hand that may never work out for you. Besides trying to build your best hand, you also will have an idea of what your opponents are collecting, so you have to be careful what you throw away since you don't want to help them, but you also have to balance out not hurting yourself too much. The gameplay is quick, even when you're playing with people who are thinkers and strategists, which makes it perfect for playing as a break game when we are in between some heavier games or when I'm playing with the family while we're waiting for dinner to be ready. The theme and the backstory that go with the game are somewhat light and fortunately that doesn't detract from the, enjoying, uh, the enjoyment of the game. The artwork is solid and it won't turn anyone away. Overall, it is a good game that I think will appeal to a variety of gamers. 
And then Michael goes on to point out that he found on BGG uh, in the game explanation by the creator of the game, which is uh, Bruce Glasgow, that uh, there is a fun way to play it with the right group. And that is to basically uh, tell a story with your cards. So as you're going through the scoring process, you say, hey, you know, I had a king and queen and they had a grand army and all that good stuff. So uh, he just wanted to point that out. But overall, I would say this has been well received by my game group. So now that you've heard the thoughts from my gaming group, let's get to what dad thinks. I'll just start off by saying I really like this game. It is a very light game. It is kind of got a little steep learning curve, uh, mainly because of the cards, um, trying to figure out what you have in your hand, what plays well with each other. Your first time through, you're not gonna know the cards. And if you're playing with a bunch of people that have played it uh, several times, and they know that, you're gonna be at a disadvantage. They're gonna know what cards to go for, which ones to look for, uh, which ones to make sure stay um, in their hand and not give them to anybody who may be going for something. Uh, also, the penalties sometimes throw people for a loop. Uh, I'm not really sure about the bonuses. Some of them are very straightforward, though, like this one is. Plus 30 with Rainstorm. So you know that if you have Lightning, you're going to want to get Rainstorm. Um, other times, you know, you may just be going for the type of cards. You're going for the Flame. Uh, like here, you get a plus nine bonus for each weapon and artifact. So, uh, which leads into another reason why I like the game is there are a lot of options that you have as far as a strategy that you want to try to go for. Now, that being said, it all depends really on what your starting hand is because the game is going to be fast. It's going to end in probably 10 minutes, if, if that. So, you have to basically take what you've got and try to make the best uh, combos that you can. Uh, sometimes luck of the draw is going to kill you, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and that may be a negative to a lot of people, but you do kind of have your own destiny in your hands somewhat because you can you know, try to figure out what cards are out in the discard that you want to get. You may have a great hand and you want to speed the game up, so you're going to be drawing cards off the top. Because every time somebody draws a card off the top, you're one step closer to the end. Because when you take a card from the discard, then you're just replacing it. So the game length did not change by that happening. The uh, other negative that people have is that it does take a while to actually score the game. And I, kind of the running joke I've heard from other reviewers is that it takes just as long to score it as it does to play it. And I'll show you why. The... All the combos that you have here, it, the game comes with this huge scoring pad, which is really cool. Um, but you're going to see you've got spots for all seven cards. You've got a spot for the base, the base and the, or the, excuse me, the bonus and the penalty, and then whatever the subtotal is. So if you don't have a, uh, a bonus or a penalty that you got to worry about, you just skip that and you bring that number down. Um, but the other times you're keeping track of all that and then adding it up. What we've started doing is instead of me kind of going through and uh, asking people, you know, what'd you have for this card? What'd you have for that card? Um, my group has played this enough now that they just, you know, pull the calculators out and they're scoring it on their own. Um, you know, we've got the honor system here, so uh, not worried about anybody cheating, but you can see where uh, scoring can be a little uh, intensive there. But the the card quality is fairly good it's not a linen finish um but the cards are not real bad i mean i've i've had flimsier cards before the artwork on the on the card to the backs um you know it's okay the artwork that is on the other cards i actually like um i think it all really works pretty good some of these are a little dark like that one there but uh you know some of these look really cool um and usually when we're playing, we're also talking, um, oh, you know, you took that, you must have that card. Or, you know, you take the princess, you know, uh, and they'll make some kind of princess bride reference or something like that. So there are all these different types of cards. I've not had too many games that have been, you know, the same. But this is a filler game. So, like I said, it plays fast. 
usually over lunch, we probably get about three games in and still have plenty of time left. So that is um, a plus in my book because then you, know, you get dealt a bad hand of cards. Okay, the game's going to be over and you're going to be able to you know start a new game and hopefully your luck will be better. So people that don't like luck-based games, luck of the draw type of thing, they're not going to like this. But you know there are several mitigating cards that you can hopefully draw or hopefully be able to pull from the discard to help you out. That being said, I do recommend this game. Uh, it's a small box game, should be easy to pick up. Uh, price point is pretty low. So um, as long as you're okay with a little bit of luck of the draw, I think you'll like this game. So I'm giving it a thumbs up. And that'll do it. So that is Fantasy Realms and we will catch you guys next time. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.